Thanks to the supporters of channel member Curtis Rothwell. Well, after a very, very frustrating summer, we're going into life in League One with close to the same team that we got promoted with last year, which wasn't necessarily the plan. And we also start the season off with two really tough games. We're learning a lot right now about how good this team is and how our season is likely to go. Hello and welcome to Club 2, part 8 of Non-Leader Legend. I'm Kevin, coming up on today's episode with our first two league games of the season. We're away against Barnsley and at home against QPR. Two teams expected by the media to be in a promotion push with us. The board are just looking for me to finish mid-table and having had the summer I've just had, I kind of get it. I think mid-table might be about right, despite all this money, which we're not allowed to spend. Because League One is is mad. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch yesterday's video. It was a, an exercise in frustration, that's for sure. So this is the 11 that we are sending to Barnsley for our first game back in League One. Barnsley are expected to be in a playoff push with us this season. Um, so decent test to see just how good we might be. And the vast majority of that team were here last season as well. The one thing we have managed to freshen up is the wide areas. We definitely needed new wingers. And this guy, Lewis Jackson, is is going to be a superstar and hopefully will be with us this season. So it's white men in goal. A bat four of Samuels, Burke, Jackson and Long. New boy Purcell alongside Powell in midfield. New boy Stavanovic, Stavanovic on the left. Youngster Clayton on the right. And then Andrew behind Ross Stewart. If we can keep Ross Stewart fit... We're going to, we're going to, I mean, he'll be a 30 goal striker at this level. He's proven it in his career previously. The comments section keep telling me he was known by Sunderland fans as the Loch Ness Drogba because um, he's Scottish and a, a big boy like Drogba who scores lots of goals, I guess. Um, let's see if we can see any evidence of that this season. He, he did struggle last year, was in and out of the team with injury. I think he played about 16, 17 games, did score almost a goal a game when he was playing though. So if we can keep him fit, he'll be great. And Joe Powell straight away starting to repay the very expensive new contract we've put him on. He is uh, the highest paid player at the club now and is has already rewarded us with his first goal back at this level. I mean, he's had a little bit of good fortune there getting past the defender, but it is a lovely finish from a tight angle to put us 1-0 up early on. It's the first shot of the game and we've scored. Here's me planning on keeping an eye on Stewart and Powell has got other ideas. Remember, top scorer last year, Powell, he's a defensive midfielder. Well, that's where we play him anyway. He could play in either of those roles as well, but we need him a little bit further back because... We've got lots of strength in depth at these kind of areas. This is where Powell is going to be used. And, uh, I mean, start as you mean to go on, I guess. An early goal for him. Andrian has picked up an injury. He's another one who was a little bit in and out of the side with fitness issues last year. We've got a few of these boys. We've got players with Premier League Championship pedigree. Um, but the reason they've ended up with us is because of fitness problems. Their, their, their career's taken a turn at some point. You've seen it with Stuart, Andrew uh, Furlong as well, who once again not fit to play today despite being a uh, championship quality player. And I guess that's the price you pay for having that calibre of player at this level. Knowing what I know now about how the wage structure works, I don't know that we sign that kind of player in future. It was kind of out of character for me anyway to go and get these players in their, in their prime, in their late 20s, and give them big money. It served purpose in getting us promoted and we've started the season well with them um, but I think we go back to what's done me well in football manager over the years from here on in and bring in the good youngsters Stevanovic by the way 23 years old fits that criteria and that was a lovely goal for him the little turn the drop of the shoulder to get himself in the position to fire that shot away he looks like he's going to be quite good for us. And that, he is much more like the kind of player that I would typically bring in. I don't need someone who's played all these games at championship level but keeps getting injured. I need guys like him who've got something to prove, having never really had the opportunity at the higher levels. But hopefully, Stuart can prove me wrong. Right, Andrin is broken. I mean, he did pick up a knock in the first half, didn't he? And I didn't actually take him off when I probably should have done. But Finners as can come on for him. I think that's the only change we need to make at this point. And uh, 
we might make a couple more now because we've hit my traditional substitution o'clock. Uh, Ross Stewart is going to come off. We're going to bring Bian Cherry on to play up front. He's probably going to be on the right-hand side of midfield eventually. Um, but for now, let's just get some game time into him, get him on uh, playing some football. We're also going to take off Reese Burke and bring on Tomkinson. Tomkinson, I would very much like Tomkinson to be a long-term starter for us. But for as long as he still wants to leave the club, which is the situation at the moment, it's very difficult to commit to him. So at the moment, he starts the season on the bench and he's going to have to work his way back into the team. Clayton has had a very adequate debut. Cole Stockton can come on for him and Biancheri can go out onto the right-hand side. Stockton will offer more of the same that we got with Ross Stewart early on. Um, Stockton I would very much like rid of, but nobody wants to buy him. He's out of contract at the end of the season. At the moment, the plan is very much to let him go. Um, but... At the moment, he's just going to keep earning his money. And another youngster coming on at left back, Chambers Shaw, another one of these Premier League youngsters that we brought in in the summer. A more typical Kev signing, um, 18 years old, comes on to play left back for us for the remainder of this match, where we've been very, very good, by the way. Looking at those match stats, we have absolutely dominated a decent Barnsley team. If this is a sign of what's to come this season, we're going to have another very good season. The The worry that we've got is because the squad is relatively small and not a huge amount of strength in depth, if we do start to pick up more injuries and fitness problems amongst these older, more injury-prone players, it might start to cause a little bit of a problem. Stevanovic is going to take the corner here for the end of this match. Floats it over. We have lost James Bond, our set-piece coach, by the way. We haven't yet replaced him, so um, set-pieces might not be quite as effective in the early days of this season as they were last year because we've lost James Bond. Um, but we're going to bring in another guy and it will be fine and we'll be back to being set pieced Set-piece beasts. Again, set pieces. That's a set-piece beast. That's a thing. Uh, right, Andrin injured again um we've got a league cup game now which i'm going to play off camera because nobody in the history of the world apart from manchester united fans have ever cared about the carabao cup so we'll play that off camera we'll be back for qpr the pre-season title favorites well a couple of pieces of good news piece of good news number one uh, we beat cardiff 4-1 in the carabao cup cardiff are in the championship so that was quite nice and we've also got ourselves a second round tie against local ish rivals ish derby who are i mean they've started reasonably well in the championship derby managed by eddie howe where did it all go wrong for him sacked by newcastle on the 9th of december 2023 so what last week Okay, fair enough. Um, <laughs> the other piece of good news, that threw me, the other piece of good news is we've had an offer for Mark Leonard from Wrexham, £400,000 for Leonard. I'm less bothered about the, the transfer fee, although it's nice to get another 400000 in. More important, though, is that he is one of the highest earning players, not somebody I necessarily plan on using. He only started 12 games last year, and it's an area we've upgraded already this year with Purcell coming in. So if we can get him gone, that's 6.75k a week that we can then spend on salaries for new players. And we might actually be able to do a little bit more squad strengthening again before the window closes. More of this kind of thing, please. But this is the team that we're putting out there for the game against QPR. QPR, remember, early season title favourites, newly relegated. If we can put on a good show against them, that'd be super duper. We're going to have to do it without Biancheri, who um, played played well against Cardiff, but did pick up an injury. He's out for a couple of weeks. So Clayton continues on the right-hand side. Finn Azaz is going to start ahead of Andrin. Otherwise, I think this is the same team as you saw on the first day of the season. It's near enough, anyway. Uh, but was Burke, did Burke play? I think Burke probably did play in that first game. He certainly played in the uh, in the midweek game against Cardiff. Let's put the uh, put the league table on so you can. I mean, it's really important after one and a bit games, uh, but we obviously want to you know establish ourselves at the top of the table. It looks like it's uh, close to a capacity uh, uh, sellout. That was that what I'm trying to say here at the Pirelli, and um, there doesn't look like there's many gaps. Um, in fact, can we have a look to see how many people have turned up? It'd be interesting. Why have so many people turned up for QPR? Um, just under 5,000. So it's not a sellout. 
but it is a bigger attendance than we were used to seeing at any point last season. Where are, where are the gaps? Because those two sides look completely rammed full of fans. Maybe QPR didn't bring anybody with them. You know, small club and all that. Uh, Powell with the far post free kick and it's headed back into the back across by Jackson and then Ross Stewart has hit the post. That is very unlike him. He scored in midweek, so he is uh, he is already off the mark for the season. It was a lovely, uh, lovely header, the kind of thing we've become used to seeing from him. But that was point blank range, and he's hit the post. It would have been easier to score than miss there. And uh, hopefully, he's not going to get stage fright in League One because he does have significant previous at this level, and you would expect him to. Uh, to score an absolute hat full of goals this year. I'd, I'd have him as one of the favourites for top scorer in this league. And that's even with Liam Delap lurking around this level. Clayton with the cross. There is Stewart. And it's his second good chance of the first 15 minutes of this match. And this time, the header goes over. And maybe it's just going to be one of those days. QPR have got a free kick on the edge of the area here. Whiteman looks like he's a little bit too far over this side of the goal. I think this free kick is going in here. And... I'm going to be a little bit upset about it because just stand, move to your left ever so slightly. Please. Oh, my word. I mean, they aimed where I thought they were going to aim. He gave him a big gap to aim at and clearly just backed his, his own scouting of the QPR players and knew they were going to miss. It was psychological. He was inviting them to hit it there because he knew they'd miss. He knew what he was doing. What a goalkeeper. Um, we've got an XG of 1.35 inside the first 25 minutes. Shows you just how big those chances that Stewart has missed are. Um, and now Samuels is injured. And this is our worst case scenario for us because we don't really have any more left backs. Lonwick, can, I mean, we're going back to early days of Tamworth. We're going inverted fullback at right at left back. Lonwick playing the Cullinan Liebird role, and uh, I mean, if we can get if we get do get rid of Leonard, I think a proper starting left back is number one priority. We lost Hamer, and I would have liked to have kept him, but we just couldn't afford the money that he was asking for. We'd have been in even more of a mess if we'd have kept him. Um, but I would like a proper starting left back. And uh, we might have to push that a little bit higher up the priority list if that's a proper injury, because we can't be playing Lonwick at left back in League One. That just seems a little bit silly. Um, but nil-nil at half time. We have had the better of the chances. They both fell to Ross Stewart. Fingers crossed he's going to get at least one more and actually put it away this time. Um, it's going to be Lonwick with the throw here. Early on in the second half, Azaz plays it back to Lonwick and there is Purcell in the middle. Ball over the top to Clayton who plays it across to Stewart. And there is the third good chance for Ross Stewart today. And he wasn't going to miss three of them. It's a decent assist from Clayton as well, but Ross Stewart is going to, I mean, if we can give him that kind of service, this is why we wanted to get wingers back in the team. If we can get this kind of service to him on a regular basis, he is going to score a lot of goals this season. That's lovely work from Clayton. Lovely finish from Stewart. 1-0 up early in this second half. And uh, I mean, if we can start this season with two wins from two, then maybe we're as good as the media think we are. I, I have my I have my doubts because this is still the core of this team is still a team that got relegated at this level a few years ago. I say that it's not even true because Whiteman was a new signing in League Two. Powell was here during the relegation, and that was it. I think so. Actually, it's a completely new team from the one that got relegated. Although I didn't necessarily build all of it. Um, right, Stevanovic not playing as well. So so Malachy uh, Stockhill who is one of the young strikers that we brought in. He's previously of Arsenal. Um, he's going to come in on that left-hand side. So two 18-year-olds as our wingers at the moment really gives you an idea of the kind of transfers we've been forced into making this summer. Um, and we are going to take off Reese Burke and give Tomkinson more game time. I don't want to force Tomkinson out. I want him to get his head right and decide he wants to stay. He is he is the, the man I would like to be Jackson's partner long-term. Lonwick playing it forward to the youngster Stockhill, who plays it back to Jackson. Jackson wants to be a ball-playing defender. We managed to convince Manchester United that we'd just play him as a centre-back, but he's obviously got it in him to play as a ball-playing defender, so it's something to monitor as the season goes on. Clayton with the cross, looking for Stewart again. The goalkeeper drops it. I think that's a penalty. It is a penalty. Chaos once again caused by Stewart trying to get on the end of a cross, and it's going to be Powell, who I think this would be a fourth goal of the season for him already. He is uh, He's starting this year the way he ended last year he's missed the penalty 
QPR did bring lots of fans in. I don't see where you fit another 2,000 people into this stadium unless you're just filling the corners and have them all stood down there. It's going to be Purcell to take the corner, looking for Tomkinson, but can't find him. And it goes out for a throw on that far side. Still 1-0. It's always a little bit precarious when it's only a one-goal advantage. We've got a couple more substitutions we can still use. Um, but the bench isn't exactly overflowing with players um, that I want to bring on. Powell is tired, so Rakeem Harper can come on for him. That's a, that's a change I don't mind making, but as this is our last stoppage, I think we probably take off Ross Stewart just to protect him. We don't want Ross Stewart to ever be in the red for conditioning because that's when he's going to pick up his injuries. So Stockton can come on and... Uh, I mean, he's here. We're paying him five grand a week. He may as well play occasionally. Tomkinson playing it to long. And now with Tomkinson again, back to Jackson, we've got everybody in the QPR half here when we're 1-0 up with five minutes to go. Stockhill plays it across, looking for Azaz. And Finn Azaz is there with the finish. Stockhill looks tiny, but it was good. Wait, he looked so quick as well. The two youngsters out wide today are definitely doing their bit and providing chances for the uh, for the old man in the middle. Oh, Azaz, I think he's only 25. It's a little harsh to describe him as an old man. But he's also told me he wants to leave on a free transfer at the end of the season. So he, if he's not an old man in reality, he's an old man in my mind because he's upset me. There's, there is a chain of logic there. Just don't try and follow it. You'll get yourself in a pickle. Um, but we've won 2-0 there. That's two wins from two at the start of the season. We have not yet had a season in this year's non-league to legend where we've not been promoted. And I don't plan on starting now. Samuels is going to miss a month. We really do need another left back in, which means Leonard needs to go. And then we can potentially bring a left back in hopefully um right we will uh we will be back on monday as ever um non need to legend remember monday to friday we get people asking every week it's monday to friday always has been always will be we do other stuff at the weekend but we'll be back on monday and by then we'll hopefully have played a few more matches probably going to be somewhere around early october ish and hopefully with a shiny new left back. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.